We've previously reviewed the TSOS PX9 imported by SDS Imports on the channel. This is one of their newer models, the Night Stalker SF PX9. And I'm going to go over the features and accessories it comes with here on the tabletop. And then I'm going to get it to the range and put it through its paces at some matches. The PX9 uses Glock sights, so if you want to swap them out for something else uh, versus what they ship with, that's easy to do. It does come milled for RMR pattern optics, and you just remove this plate and the mounting points are there to put an RMR pattern sight directly on the slide. Uh, no other machining needed. At the back of the slide here, there is a striker cocked indicator. When you pull the trigger, you'll see that plunger go down. And it does have a loaded chamber indicator in the form of if there is a round in the chamber, you'll see the red on the extractor sticking out. The Night Stalker SF comes with a threaded barrel. It is half 28 threads, so if you want to install a compensator or a suppressor, you can do that. Most of the common uh, comps and suppressors on the market are half 28 thread, uh, but you got to make sure because it is also the thread of AR-15 muzzle devices that you use one with a nine millimeter bore and uh, don't have a kaboom by trying to put a nine millimeter through a uh, 556 hole in a compensator or suppressor. The PX9 does come with a bunch of different grip inserts. You can swap out to change the grip angle and palm swell and uh, side panels for how thick you want it to be. Uh, and the magazine well is also removable. You initiate all those changes by just pushing this pin out and then everything can slide apart. Uh, and then when you get it back together, just put the pin back in. Very simple to reconfigure to your preference. I have swapped over the magazine catch to be left-hand operation. And the magazines come in and out very easily. The PX9 ships with two magazines, one an 18 rounder and the other a 20 rounder. It's the same magazine body with a plus two extension on it. And as we mentioned before, the PX9 does use SIG 226 magazines. So even if these somehow stop being imported, you'll always be able to find magazines that work in your PX9. The rail on the dust cover is Picatinny pattern. So if you have a flashlight that has swappable hardware to be for a universal pistol light versus a Picatinny rail, make sure it's set up for the Picatinny rail. Uh, I've swapped over this X300 for that purpose. Uh, it is a very snug fit on the rail which is good. I don't like loose lights on the rail, particularly because I do the thumbs forward technique for momentary activation. And if the light is sloppy on the rail, uh, that can be kind of annoying when you activate it to have it move around. I'm going to get this Hollow Sun 407 with eight MOA circle reticle mounted to the slide off camera. You're not able to see the circle on camera here because it's kind of flaring out. But this 8 MOA circle is kind of an interesting option for handguns uh, to zero to the center of the circle. Big, fast circle for uh, close-up, fast shooting. And the circle does relatively correspond to the grouping of a handgun at range better than a single 2 MOA dot does, for example. All right, I might as well show what this looks like without the plate in place. It does have two threaded posts for the screws that secure the optic to go into and those threaded posts do help index the optic a little bit better. Pretty nice snug fit on the slide. And I'm going to point out that it does come with two different sets of screws. Those are the screws that come for the plate. These are the screws that come with it for mounting an optic. And it does include a ceiling plate if you're using a optic that has a bottom load battery like an RMR. This hollow sun, the battery loads from the side, so that's not a concern. I don't need to use the sealing plate with it because it's already sealed. On the previous video, we had a lot of comments asking what type of holsters the PX9 uses. Uh, SDS Imports tells me that the SIG 320 holsters work with it. Other people have commented that XD holsters work with it. I need to test those myself to verify. Uh, I would like to see if Safari Land Duty holsters work with it, for example. But I kind of take for granted that as a left-handed shooter, I'm probably not going to be able to find the holster I want, specifically when I'm using a light and an optic on a handgun. Uh, I just go to Pro 2 Customs down the road for me and have a custom holster made. There's a lot of custom Kydex vendors around the country. Um, some of them have FFLs like Pro 2 Customs does. If you want to get a proper holster for your specific setup, I recommend having one custom made to meet your needs. 
And in fact, when I do have holsters made for these, I have them set up for the uh, Safari Land QLS system so that I can swap them on and off my belts easily, just like I do with my Glock holsters and other holsters that I use. Prior to using the Night Stalker at matches, I did take it out and zero it at 25 yards. The circle at 25 yards being 8 MOA did roughly correspond to the group size of about two and a half inches. I did find that the shorter screws allowed me to tighten the optic down better than the longer screws. I believe those are intended for an RMR with the ceiling plate in place. There's always a familiarization and acclimatization period when switching between pistols. But when switching between my Glock 34 with optic and the Night Stalker SF with optic, there isn't a whole lot of difference. One thing I will point out here, though, is that the trigger on the Night Stalker feels as good out of the box as my Glock 34 trigger does after having replaced it with aftermarket parts to make it better. The more I shoot this gun, the more I like it over my 34, though, as the way I've configured the grip fits my hand better. The mostly vertical back strap just feels more natural in my hand than one with a hump. And on the Glock, I'm pretty much stuck with how it is unless I want to do major frame rework. The Night Stalker SF has an MSRP of $470, but you can find it online for $420 or less, depending on where you look. Out of the box, the Night Stalker comes with a lot of great features and customization for the end user. The trigger is quite good for the price, and I don't think you'd be making a mistake if you bought this as your first competition-oriented pistol. SDS Imports did send us this pistol for review, but I like the handling and how it shot well enough that I purchased one of the tactical models myself. The tactical model is essentially the same as the Night Stalker SF, but it doesn't have the lightning holes through the slides. The recoil dynamics a little bit different, but overall it handles very similarly. I do have other pistols from various manufacturers in the review queue that I need to get through, but I do intend to keep using these PX9s at matches as time permits. If you like this kind of content, consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you for watching.